name is Saskia Chokro, I'm from Angin, and then I will moderate this discussion today. As you know, a few months ago, Angin published a sector study on this topic, specifically on connecting Dutch companies and Indonesian startups. This webinar is built upon and inspired by this sector study. We will learn many interesting insights from our experts in the panel today. Thank you for each of the speakers for their time. Uh, and, and then first point on the, our agenda is today is to hear the opening remarks from the Netherlands Ambassador to Indonesia, His Excellency Lambert Grines. Uh, to Ambassador Lambert Grines, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, uh, Saskia. And uh, thank you very much to all uh, who are uh, watching and who are participating. Uh, I've uh, understood that there are many people interested in this webinar. It's uh, exciting to, to know that uh, a couple of hundred people, hundreds of people are, are indeed now uh, uh, watching. And I think you're right because uh, startups is a hot topic. So good that you're here. Um, now being the Dutch ambassador, I'd like to start with a few words on our Dutch position here in, in Indonesia. Um, we are by far the biggest European investor in Indonesia. We're the second um, trade partner, uh, European trade partner with, uh, with Indonesia. And I guess most of you know these, these major Dutch companies, uh, well-known uh, corporates which are active in Indonesia, such as Heineken or Philips, uh, Royal Dutch Shell, uh, Friesland Campina, which is a company name which you may not know, but you may know their, their product, which is uh, Susu Bendera, and so on. And these are the famous, you know, the uh, companies serving the consumer market product. Um, there are other big companies which are not well known because they are not in, on the consumer uh, products, uh, working in the maritime industry, Vopak, or uh, in water, water management, uh, the water management consultants. Now, under that level of these corporates, we've got dozens, we've got hundreds of smaller uh, Dutch companies, including many, many startups, and you will get to know two of them today. Um, and they are working together with their Indonesian counterparts because there are many, many more Indonesian startups, thousands uh, of them, and I think many of them are working already together with uh, Dutch companies, both startups and uh, the corporates. And that brings me to the the, the issue of today, how, how can we as an embassy, but how can you as startups and how can the major, the, the corporates, how can they improve um, their connections and, and learn from each other? Um, and it is a relevant question because we see that Indonesia in a way it's an exciting, it's an exciting context. Uh, 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 the, the startup ecosystem in Indonesia is developing very rapidly. Um, and we see a lot of opportunities here. Now, I like that word opportunity because it, is, it helps us in becoming enthusiastic and to see something happening in the future. And we see something on the horizon, but how to translate an opportunity to a reality? Now, this I think where the Angin report, I hope you have been able to, to see it and to read it, uh, where the Angin report comes in handy. They are trying to translate this question from opportunities to reality. They focused on a couple of sectors. Um, let me see, uh, uh, agriculture, healthcare, maritime, water and waste management. Um, they focused on the question, how can you, um, they focused on the, on the, on the, sorry, on the on startups, on, on uh, corporates, but also on the third group of institutions or organizations, uh, and I call that the enabling environment, the connectors. Think about universities, um, governments, uh, network organizations, um, uh, incubators, embassies. So they, in the report, they describe how, how these institutions can find each other. Now, and that's also, I think, what you are going to discuss in the, in the webinar. Yeah. To make this abstract discussion a bit more concrete, I, I'd like to share one example. I just heard it a couple of days ago from one of my colleagues. It's about a Dutch multinational, and they were looking, um, they, they wanted to digitally improve their, their customer engagement and their marketing strategy. So they contacted an Indonesian um, tech startup, and, and that small tech startup, they offered innovative technology to that major Dutch company. 
um, that enable them to um, basically to, to improve their digital relations or their, their relation with their digital customers um, through a kind of an interactive communication platform. Um, and through that, they, that big company could, could target a younger age group. Now, it sounds simple and it sounds logical, right? I mean, from two sides, uh, there, were, there was a question, there was a response from this young uh, Indonesian tech startup, and it, it served both. Um, now, and I actually can share many of these examples, um, but I won't <laughs> because I'm talking too long already. But so what do we see from the Angry Report? What startups want is um, they look, they're looking for, they, they want to, to, to access a wider pool of resources. They want to, um, to, 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 they're searching for business experience and they are looking for know-how. Now, and from the corporate point of view, they look for fresh ideas, out of the box ideas, um, and sometimes also emerging, emerging or innovative technologies. Now, sounds like a win-win, easy, we're done, but it's not that, that easy. Um, why not? Maybe it's a matter of different cultures, different perspectives, different views, views um, adopting different collaboration models. Or is it maybe a question of where should I begin? Where should I start if I'm a, a startup? Where to begin? And I think that was also one of the, the titles, right, of this, uh, this webinar, where to begin? And I, I'm definitely not the one who's going to respond to that question, but I'd like to, to invite the, the experts also to really, from their experience, help us in understanding where to begin. So to conclude, um, I think there's a lot to be done. A lot is being done already. We can learn from each other. Um, coming back to our own position as an embassy, we are one of those connectors. We belong to this enabling environment. Don't hesitate to contact us. You may contact Indy, who's standing next to me. You may contact Joost, who's also participating to this uh, webinar, or us or me as an ambassador. Do contact us and uh, we can try to connect you with each other. I'm very, very grateful for your participation um, and I wish you a very, very nice uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Grind, for opening this webinar. The enthusiasm is basically, we feel it, like the sense of opportunity. And, the, and, and of course, after this, we will share the uh, speaker's experience. And we also got uh, a lot of questions from the attendees that we tried to answer with this, uh, during these uh, presentations. So glad to know, actually, the embassy is willing to support, support in the making connections as well. Um, and then uh, now I would like to introduce you to the speakers of today's session. First, we have Ibu Agustin Gunawan, VP Partnerships of Allo Doctor. Hello, Ibu. Thank you so much for your time. And then um, we'll have uh, Dirk Jan Outschorn, founder and CEO of Force Wise. And then we also have Gerrit Jan van de Veen, uh, founder and CEO of the World Startups, uh, but now the managing director uh, of the World Startups. And uh, first, uh, after, uh, and then after this, uh, I will just start with the presentation on uh, how and what was actually Angin did and how we managed to spot the frameworks of collaboration to connect the, these two worlds, Netherlands startup worlds and Indonesia startup worlds. So I will start with this quick presentation, just a quick overview, and then followed by the speakers. Okay, let me start uh, here. Share screen. Okay. So I will begin. Uh, so this, uh, the report uh, that Ang introduced uh, was uh, titled Connecting Indonesian Startups and Dutch Companies. It's basically a scoping study on possibilities for mutually beneficial connection between the two ecosystems of the country. And the objective is basically opportunities and challenges in the Indonesian startup scene, and also a glimpse of each sector Dutch focus interest player in Indonesia, and also the engagement recommendation for whoever wants to be in it. We, we actually shared it 
to four, the entrepreneurs, the enabling uh, ecosystem that uh, the ambassador stated, we call it startups assistant organizations, and also for capital provider and government. And then we will conclude it uh, with the business case recommendation on possibly what's work. So then on, we go to this webinar. This webinar is basically meant to identify elaborate feasibility where Dutch private sector can involve in the Indonesia startup scene. Uh, during the report, Angin aggregated 74 secondary report and we directly sourcing primary data from 52 startups, 32 active investors and 33 SAOs in Indonesia and Netherlands to gain insight on what works. As the ambassador stated, we were focusing on this six, uh, six sector, health tech, agriculture, logistic, water, financial service and voice management. So we realized that this is where the collaboration can begin based on the interest that uh, the Dutch party and in Indonesia has. So this webinar, these are the uh, speakers and also here shown. I will start. Uh, basically, why collaborate with startups? If a company, why collaborate with startups? First, we realized that the, the, the market in the, in the world is changing. So the companies, especially a long and old, uh, old, maybe more than 20 years old company, need to engage with the potential future market share that is already shared by the new startups. And also the company is getting, try to get the shot of startup DNA, which is the innovative power and the, the focus of the startup itself, which is fast paced. And also to, the, to get the talent pool, because we realized that the quality talent pool is start to shift. Previously in the 20th century, we realized that the best talent pool goes to the corporates. And then now we realize that all these best talents goes to the fast paced startups. And also we li what we like in the startup scene is basically the innovation that is democratized and also the new market creation because a lot of business model of the startups is basically something that we never think of it before. And then second question is why Indonesia? So we try to see Indonesia as the Southeast Asia market colossal aggregator. So we realized that in uh, adult population of Southeast Asia, there is the this big number where Indonesia almost all get the half of the market itself. And we are talking about the bankable uh, population and the underbanked and even the unbanked population. So there's a lot of uh, possibilities for every player that wants to tap into whichever market that is available here. And from the other perspective, the startup scene in the Indonesia itself is still Jakarta-centric. Although nowadays we can spread it to Java-centric, the island of Java. Uh, but again, the, the Jakarta itself is basically the top 10 global ecosystem considering to bank for buck, where this early stage funding per startup is considerably interesting because it's not that big comparing to the startups early stage funding in the other countries. However, the exit growth index is still big and the output growth index is not that small and also the funding growth index uh, can be better because uh, we see that the one is the lowest and then 10 is the highest. So that we see that the output growth index is more than five. And then Indonesia itself, we go, we realized that Indonesia is the, this big blue thing in the Southeast Asia where this is Philippines and this is Australia. And then also there's a financial uh, capital focus in the Singapore. So we have this kind of uh, its own ecosystem on how to do things. Comparing to the ease of doing business in Indonesia, we realized that the, the rank was, is not that high. We realized that it's, it's considered not that not not even the big 50 but what we see is like that big population which is focusing on the lower middle income country however just some days ago the government stated that uh, uh, through the world bank index it's gonna go to the upper middle income country which is gonna show another different type of challenges especially in the talent pool and the workforce again 
after that, we try to see according to the Indonesian entrepreneurs based on our research. According to them, the challenges within the ecosystem is this big five. The regulation, even though, even though the ease of doing business is not that high, apparently, according to the entrepreneurs, it's not even the biggest two challenges. So we realized this, the regulation challenges is might be coming from the people who doesn't know how it works. So we, we kind of see that, oh, there's a possibility that and engaging with the local partners who actually know how to navigate the regulation is really important. The biggest challenges so far is the investment followed by the talent and the investment in a way that the investment goes only to, to the people who, who we call it trailblazers. We call it that the people who always get the investment, the startups that is really on the high tier and they know what the investors want and knowing the knowledge how to get it. But we realized that there is a big numbers of startups that actually want this type of investment. However, they do need the assistance. And second, second part is the talent where we see that this talent is uh, basically focusing on how to get the talent, the right talent for the right technology that, that they built and also how to retain them. So the third is the facility where, of course, the building infrastructure is not cheap. So the last two is basically the regulation and the market, because as we see, the market is always there with the big number. And then why with Netherlands? To connect to the challenges, we realized that the, the most interesting thing about Netherlands, according to the Indonesian entrepreneurs, is the knowledge transfer. So they realized that they want the technology, they want to the know-how, they want the how-to. Market access, not so much, but human resources, even not so much. So there's more, like, even the funding access, because they realized that there's a lot of local local money around lying around with the less with the less uh yeah with the less the uh, uh consideration on the uh on the how difficult it would get the regulation and how the difference in foreign exchange so this big uh 54 num 54 percent is more than uh, half so we, we this is what we think that it that will be needed and then this is the potential areas of the collaboration uh, we stated it, this partner with local stakeholders and the knowledge transfer and accelerating the tech development in the startup ecosystem where also to connect available access to appropriate funding and also to establish the access to new market for startups with scaling up initiative. And also the obtaining the best practice for capacity building from Dutch SAO programs that we know it's good. So we have three models here. The first is basically corporate innovations. The, we can see this uh, detail in the report, uh, so I'm not going to talk much about this. But again, the second one is the venture builders model. And then the third one is join R&D. And then from this on, we also have the recommendation for the private sector startups and corporates. Uh, so this, this is basically the, the summarize for all these three above we can also see this in the report it's really a uh, joint r d model three is basically for those who are expanding their market and also the venture builder is suitable for the private sector to develop their own idea with the local team expertise where the corporate innovation is basically asking startups to solve their problems within the company and also we also have actually recommendation for governments because because uh, for instance, the gateway for the incomings for the government is important as well as to build the regional hub, also the networking and matchmaking platform if possible and providing capacity building. For SAO, we also have where the point is the SAO needs to be focused that uh, what uh, to know that actually what Indonesian entrepreneurs want to have more output growth index and more questions. The last one we can send to like what the ambassador uh, Lambert said, we can send to the Jack Ear at minbuza.nl for queries or uh, Sarita at Angin ID for report related questions. The subject could be uh, this one. And then uh, if you want to know about research, please feel free to download. It's also available in the email. Thank you so much. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. 
uh, the next uh, on the round is I hope uh, I hope it's still exciting to to be followed this webinar because the next one is going to be more and more interesting. So the first one we will uh, we will introduce the Bu Agustin Gunawan from Allo Doctor that she will said about the corporates and startup trends in Indonesia. Please, Bu Agustin. Before you started, I also got a lot of interesting questions that come from our to our inbox. Uh, actually, this uh, since the webinar started, from the uh, relating to the challenges that that the studies also proven that the corporates and startup have to find a balanced way to collaborate, meaning there's a several changes might occur on the process. Could you share your experience on this in the Allo Doctor and what is the challenging aspect? And also, what are the sector-specific challenge for the healthcare? And also, in addition to that, uh, with these uh, changes, what will the future look like for Allo Doctor? Is Allo Doctor interested to pursue more and more international partnership and with Dutch corporates, or what actually make it interesting for Allo Doctor? Please, Ibu Agustin. Okay, uh, thank you, Saskia, for uh, such a lovely opportunity. Maybe what I would like to share is the challenges within country. Yeah. So this is first is not related with the Dutch environment. Actually, for the digital uh, digitized technology in healthcare, I think it's the most uh, less uh, current compared with let's say like fintech and something like that. Why? Because in healthcare, people thought that everything has to be done in the healthcare facility and then they are wondering what is the digital thing to do with uh, with the healthcare and then they think that this is a quiet uh, intervention and then a little bit disruptive for them so that's why the first time that our doctor appears that uh, at that time we are struggling how to how we make a proportioning a collaboration with the partners at that time because uh, maybe at that time we are only uh, what we call it uh, market pools, yeah. Where are we attracting more traffic to digital for the content readers, etc. And then uh, thanks God that at the moment we having more than 1,200 plus for the healthcare provider as well as other things uh, product related health. Are uh, we are expanding to that. So the first time is convincing uh, what is the digital platform could help the uh, partners in Indonesia and then in what way we could help them, especially in captivating the digital market in Indonesia. Because based on your report as well, Angin report, and then statistic of Indonesia as well, that from almost 2, 000, uh, 270 million of population, 25 to 30% is a million, millennials and then also internet users. So that's why, why this market, we call it very attractive and emerging market for all. I think that's my explanation. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can start your presentation now. Okay. Okay, uh, let me introduce first about the Allo Doctor. That Allo Doctor is a leading Indonesian health tech platform. Yeah, it's not a self claim, but based on the traffic analysis, that from the 269 million uh, population in Indonesia, and then from one, 171 million internet users in Indonesia, uh, we have 100 million visitors to Allo Doctor platform, be it in portal for the medical, we call it Allo Medica, as well as combined with Allo Doctor for non-medical uh, visitors and users. And then uh, our goals are to be number one as a health tech destination for Indonesian. So that's why, why we, if you see, our platform is using Indonesian language, not Indonesian mixed or mixed with English or other foreign uh, native uh, 
uh, language because we are targeting Indonesian as a, our first, our main customer, either both from medical professional as well as non-medical professional. And then, uh, why or why we can uh, have a dream, have a goals like that? Because actually our advantages is we are a leader in digital traffic. Because I think the the most uh, successful recipe recipe for all the digital platform are traffic. Then we can do whatever uh, the business model that we can think of. We can be partnering of with other uh, relevant partners, even with that company or corporates too. And then a glance about Allo Doctor. We have Allo Medica and then we have Allo Doctor. That Allo Medica specific for the uh, healthcare professional. And then for Allo Doctor is non-healthcare. So everybody could jump in and then uh, uh, to get uh, information, to get health update, and then to get information regarding recommended hospital, recommended doctors, where to go, as well as we also have insurance in technology, meaning we are marketing the insurance based on the platform only. And then about the growth itself, uh, from year to year, we have a significant uh, growth, whether it be in web, because we are uh, in both sides, we are in a web platform as well, as well as we are on the, also in the apps. So this is a web visitor, unique visitor, as well as page viewer. And then demographic wise, uh, we are ranging from 18 until 65, and where the most of the population relies on the 25 until 44. So this is a productive age a generation. Well, between male and female is almost same, like 41 compared to 8, uh, 58. Uh, percent and then our readers are basically uh, from a uh, big city area and then some uh, remote area in total about cumulatively 15 percent total and then at the moment we are trying to be a health tech platform that cater all medical patient journey starting from the information itself if you look uh, in the Google, and then you type any kind of uh, disease name or disease category. Google's are based on algorithm natural, place us in the top position. Why? Because the most visiting uh, web and apps that ever in the Google's. So we provide all information needed by the Indonesian people. As well, we also have telemedicine platform. We call it Chat with Doctor. And then we also have booking platform to help our traffic, our users go into the right uh, medical care for their specific medical needs. As well as we, we have insurance, we call it Allo Doctor Protexi. So basically this is like a 360 degree of journey patient start from search until if they are go to the hospitalized that can get insurance for that. And then the topic are very varied. All the specialty are there. And then about the booking platform, we are number one in booking platform. It is uh, proven by our uh, partnership with the healthcare, it getting uh, better and getting adding more uh, healthcare partners because we almost book almost twenty k per month for the booking itself. And then this is chat feature. Uh, I think there is uh, some, uh, maybe some curiosity regarding what is the impact of the COVID-19 uh, yeah. with the telemedicine platform. Of course, this is like a golden opportunity for us because our traffic are increasing for just previously before COVID is only 500K. And then right, and then right now the chat is more than 500k is 750 with the peak one is starting from March and April. That's very interesting, Agustin. We can we uh, can we listen to you more after, on the Q and A session later because okay, this Allo sure. Doctor chat feature, like uh, Allo Doctor, is really interesting, especially on during this time. Okay, Thank you. Sure. So much. 
uh, for your time. Yeah. And then uh, why? Because we have comprehensive uh, doctor pools uh, starting from 500 GP all over Indonesia. They are having all the complete licensing needed for the to give consultation as well as prescription because we know that from prescription we need SEP Indonesia for the practice license. And then we have more than 400 specialists all over Indonesia and that practice as well in the uh, healthcare provider. And then, of course, customer or user experience is very good, is very uh, needed at this point of time. So fast response from us, as well as operational hours, and then positive review from the customer feedback. Why the stress on special coverage? I think we already talking about this. And then we also can do a prescription. So people, it's not necessary have to go to the hospital itself. They can consult through their own comfort home or maybe bed because they cannot, uh, apa, they are in the sick condition. And then they can buy any prescription from, uh, from the doctor, from the nearest pharmacy they have uh, nearby, the nearby the house. <clears throat> and then we also not uh, forget about our corporate so social responsibility. So that's why during uh, the peak of the COVID, which is I think is about in March, we are helping the government in this term is we helping Ministry of Health providing a free chat booth uh, for self-assessment risk factor of coronaviruses. And then this is a major hit uh, for us because it almost uh, it almost uh, hit by I think over a million people try to assess to do the self-assessment for themselves and then for their family. So if we are talking about partnership itself, because this is the main major topics of this webinar, the partnership, we are, Allo Doctor currently have more than 1,200 plus across Indonesia for healthcare providers. And then about, we are having like uh, advertising, we have Allo Medica webinar, so our client mostly are pharmaceuticals as well as health conscious product brands because we are we are only dealing if this is correct uh, correctly medically uh, proven or uh, evidence based medicine and then we also regarding the insurance we are talking about partnership with, with corporate as well as with retail and then uh, if I'm asking what is the partnership challenge actually within country, the, the issue is first time that I mentioned before is trust about collaboration. Some people confuse about the data, what is the owner of the data, blah, blah, blah. Actually, that is not the major issue at this point of time. And then first major condition, like I said before about the COVID-19 situation that impact all the industry as well as the healthcare industry, of course. And then professional barriers, we are talking about telemedicine. Well, we know already that some traditional uh, medical professional, especially uh, if the position are uh, very seniors, they are quite reluctant to accept new technology like telemedicine. They think that only face-to-face -face intervention is the best way to do the consultation. And then the regulation is well as well. The regulation cannot stand by itself. It also can affect it by professional as well. And then we are, if we are talking about okay, what this in this question, what is the potential collaboration with that corporate or companies? I think in my uh, possible uh, thing regarding the, I think uh, corporate like in Netherlands are very advanced. In technology, especially in health tech, uh, in healthcare uh, equipment and devices, so we are talking about possible collaboration in monitoring and diagnosis, especially for RPM and then Internet of Things, because that would be a lovely thing as a support basis to do a telemedicine. And then other thing, of course, uh, that uh, His Excellency uh, Pak Lambert talking about. Uh, about the Dutch company thinking about customer engagement in with the digital market. I think this is the best potent ways to do that. So I 
quality market entrance and expansion for quality health uh, Netherlands products to Indonesian market. And then, of course, knowledge sharing, be it from government to government and then government to corp uh, and then uh, corporate between corporate and startup. Why the government also has to be involved? Because it can share what is the struggle uh, bringing the health tech, let's say like telemedicine in Netherlands, compared with Indonesian for the adaptation to begin with. That's the most uh, interesting thing to be shared. How successful in Netherlands compared with Indonesian. So this is like uh, bringing the like some kind like uh, inspiration for Indonesian as well. And then no other thing, no expansion, no activity, no involving working capital. Of course, we got working capital is also needed. And then about Allo Doctor itself, what is the next plan? We are trying to get to more recovering activity like e-commerce uh, for the pharmaceutical as well as health uh, product related. I think this is the end of the my presentation. I think as a partnership people, wherever the words say, let's do collaborate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bu Agustin. Okay, that's very interesting. We also get uh, some questions in our Q&A. Uh, Bu Agustin, if there is a question directly related to our doctor, you can answer directly. Uh, yeah. And then the second speaker that is really interesting as well, uh, the corporate startup trends in the Netherlands from the Forest Wise, uh, Dirk Jan Auschhorn. Please, uh, Dirk Jan, you can start your presentation. Uh, however, before that, we, uh, we I almost forgot that there is a lot of questions to Forest Wise as well. That Can you share your experience on the collaboration between the the, these two countries because we know that Forest Wise already been doing it and also how this collaboration help you your company scale and also alongside that uh, what would you like to pursue the current model uh, seller buyer or would you be interested to explore uh, other collaboration models such as, uh, such as other types with other uh, with Dutch or Indonesian corporates and second question, it would be, what would be the reasons for that? And which collaboration model do you think fit best with the nature of your company? So if uh, we also want to know that what is your view on working with ecosystem builders like accelerators, incubators, or government institution, because for us, wise is, we know that really uh, related to the gov what government want to do. Please, uh, Dirk Jan, uh, we give you the floor. Thank you, Saskia, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for having us uh, in this webinar. Um, um, many of the topics and, and the questions I think we will uh, we will address in the in the presentation. Uh, we we see ourselves a bit as uh, yeah both an Indonesian and a, a Dutch startup as we are located in both uh, both countries, uh, and we see that uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a big, a bit, big advantage for us because there is already uh, so many relations between these two countries. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in the Netherlands, we, we are able to find investors and to, to sell our products. But also uh, in Indonesia, of course, uh, we see a growing uh, interest in, in our products. Uh, and uh, th that's, that's very interesting for us to see. We don't uh, sell um, so many of our products yet in Indonesia, but um, yeah, the market is, is uh, growing very rapidly. Uh, and the, the, in, the embassy in Indonesia is, is also a, a good partner for us. We have been able to uh, get in contact with, uh, with a lot of interesting uh, partners uh, through the embassy as well. We have visited um, uh, the embassy on uh, several locations. And uh, yeah, th this is uh, a big help for us. So that's also, uh, yeah, as a word of advice, uh, that's a very good uh, starting point for, for Indonesian startups as, as well. Shall I start uh, the presentation? Yeah, please. That's really interesting and very concise. All right. So, um, there we go. All right. Um, yes. Thanks again for, for joining uh, today. Um, Forcewise mission is to stop deforestation. And we do this by uh, producing rainforest ingredients that, uh, for, for the cosmetics and the food industry. At this moment, mostly for, for cosmetics still, uh, but uh, growing uh, interest from the, from the food industry uh, as well. 
Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Dirk Jan Oudshoorn. Uh, graduated from the TU Delft University in 2009 in industrial design engineering, um, and been living in Indonesia since 2013. And since 2014, so more than six years at the moment, uh, living in in Sintang in uh, West Kalimantan. Uh, at this moment, I'm in the, the Netherlands, um, but uh, where we have uh, our office as well. Uh, but our factory is located in uh, in Sintang, where we we live to the company for uh, together with Theo Smits in 2018 after uh, working for uh, several years uh, for an NGO doing similar kind of products uh, projects uh, and uh, we, we saw the interest that we saw the potential of the uh, yeah of the forest uh, actually and uh, of how we can protect the forest uh, in, a, in a business kind of way so that's why uh, we started um, forest wise um, we see that um, oh, sorry, that was too quick. Uh, we see that, that of course, the, the Indonesian forests are under heavy pressure. Um, uh, and it's a very big shame, we think, that, that the forests are disappearing in, in such, a, such a challenging or such an alarming rate. Uh, while there is so much value in the forest, um, we lost all, already 56% of the rainforest in Borneo in the last 50 years. And uh, yeah, literally it's a waste because there's um, so much still to find in the forest uh, that, that can, can be harvested and can provide income for the local people. And we believe much more than uh, converting it into, uh, into plantations. So uh, if you would uh, show the, the video uh, we, that explains more about uh, how we work. It's a two minute uh, introduction video. Cosmetics play an important role in making us look and feel good. But the way that some cosmetic ingredients are sourced is putting unsustainable pressure on the planet. This also applies to a wide range of food ingredients. In Borneo, for instance, the clearing of natural forest for palm oil production is having a devastating effect on flora and fauna, as well as on forest communities and their livelihoods. Since 1970, 56% of Borneo's rainforest has been lost to deforestation. The environmental, economic, and social consequences are disastrous. There is another way, however. At ForestWise, our goal is to stop deforestation. We help forest communities to derive an income from natural products that can be harvested from the rainforest without harming it. These products, such as alipi butter, kimiri oil, virgin coconut oil, and orenga sugar, find a wide range of applications in today's cosmetics and food industries. Their production has no negative impact on the local flora, fauna, and ecosystems. And it has a major positive impact on rainforest communities. It makes sound economic sense too. A hectare of wild harvested land can deliver an annual product turnover of 3,000 euro. The same area under palm oil production delivers only 1,440 euro per year. We call this rainforest value, creating high quality ingredients in a way that delivers economic value while protecting the rainforest and all who depend on it. To find out more, please visit us at www.forestwise.org. So that's, uh, that's basically the glimpse of what ForestWise uh, is doing. And uh, we also see in the Q&A session, we see that uh, several questions goes to uh, ForestWise as well. Uh, for instance, like what do we have to prepare and how do we start international collaboration to scale up our company internationally? This is gonna be answered also with his presentation. Maybe we can start, we wait for him to join us again. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we would like to uh, check on the, there's a lot of questions so far. It's, it's now 17 questions. And also, uh, Ibu Augustine has been trying to answer some of the question that is focusing on the other doctor. And uh, we will see more. Ah, they, 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 yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm back again. Um, I switched to, um, to my mobile network because my Wi-Fi, uh, uh, stopped uh, suddenly. Sorry for that. Right. Um, I hope you can see the screen again. Yeah, okay, sorry. All right, then uh, we're back in the game. Very sorry for that. Um, 
yes, our approach, um, yeah, as, you, as you have seen in the video, uh, we, we try to create rainforest value, and we do this in three steps. Uh, we look at the forest and uh, see how, uh, what, what products we can find there and um, how we can work together with the local people, what they can uh, take from the forest without harming it, uh, to make it into uh, products that, that can produce value. Uh, and we um, then uh, connect the farmers to, uh, that are collecting the products to uh, the market, uh, try to make that, uh, um, that road as, uh, as short as possible. Um, at the moment, we are already selling uh, Elipi butter for, made from Elipi nuts. Um, also, Arenga sugar, which is uh, similar to coconut sugar. Uh, coconut oil, uh, Kamiri oil, not so much known in the, the Netherlands, but uh, I think uh, well known in Indonesia. Um, rubber seed oil is a is potential uh, that we are looking at at the moment and fresh fruits uh, as well as beeswax. Um, but at the, at the moment, um, we are mainly focusing on these uh, four products. Elipi butter is a, a very good moisturizer, so we sell this uh, mainly to the cosmetics industry. Uh, Kamiri oil has actually um, uh, applications bo for both food and uh, cosmetic industry as well as uh, coconut oil. Arenga sugar is, is more for food. Uh, it's very low glycemic index sugar, um, so it can be even consumed by diabetics, um, but it's also used as a scrub in, the, in cosmetics. Um, then for the results that we have, uh, we have um, reached uh, so far, with, uh, mainly with Elipi butter, um, is that we have supported 700 Indonesian families in the, since the start uh, in 2018. Uh, increasing their yearly income by 16%, even though the Elipi butter is not available every year, uh, and protecting a forest area of 200,000 hectares, so that is similar to the size of Luxembourg. It's a small country, but still we are very proud of, uh, of, the, of that result. Um, now go to the next slide. Sorry, my, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, to talk about uh, the collaborations, we, have, uh, we want to highlight three of our partnerships that were key for scaling up uh, our company. Uh, I would say that we wouldn't have been able to set up uh, our company at all without these uh, partnerships. Uh, starting with, uh, with Jan Decker uh, IMCD, which is a distributor for cosmetic ingredients amongst other uh, products. Um, and uh, how did we connect to this company is basically by um, by sending a lot of emails to potential uh, customers. And uh, this has taken uh, a few years uh, even, uh, but, but when, uh, when we found the first uh, customer, then you see that it's easier also to get uh, to the next one. Uh, Lush is a, is a cosmetic brand uh, that we also supply to. Uh, they have about 1,000 stores in, in 51 countries. Uh, and this was through a referral uh, from within our network, which uh, led us to participating in one of their small grant programs and eventually selling our products uh, to, to them as well. Uh, also like to mention Partnerships for Forests. Uh, this is uh, an it's a program from the, the UK government. Um, they also have a grant program and they support NGOs and uh, companies who are focusing on forest protection. Uh, and this was uh, their, their grant uh, after yeah, a very uh, tough um, due diligence uh, was also uh, yeah, a key for us to get in investors uh, to, to invest in our company. So coming to the, um, uh, yeah, how, how, how to get to this collaboration or where to start. Um, waiting again for the next slide to load. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, who, uh, of course, first start with who would be your ideal partners for collaborations. Uh, yeah, what would be your ideal launching uh, partner, of course. Uh, and then see if you can find anyone in your own network uh, or through LinkedIn, if you can get uh, referrals, if you can get to these, uh, these companies. Um, and also visiting industry events. Uh, in the, at the start, we, we visited the trade shows. Uh, now we are also uh, exhibiting on those trade shows ourselves, but at first uh, we're just visiting them, talking to the, the industry and seeing if uh, indeed um, yeah, there is a market for, uh, for what you are uh, trying to do. Um, and uh, of course, yeah, social media is, is becoming more and more important. We, we just uh, 
let's say we just started uh, focusing more on that but in this way you can invite people to to join on your journey and you never know who knows uh yeah uh, someone who is following you might know someone uh who is interested in your products so this is also a way to expand uh, uh, your network uh, and as mentioned before contact your embassy uh they have relations uh, to to most of the the larger companies um of course so yeah this is a, a great way to start and they'll know how to uh, how to connect you um and uh, networking events in general of course this is uh, pre corona times uh, we have uh, seen that uh, even though the sometimes a networking event might not be speci specialized uh, or specific for your industry but uh, yeah you never know who you will meet there and um yeah uh, last uh, but not least just uh, spread the word uh, where wherever uh, you can of course about uh, about what you are doing that is very practical uh, input uh, uh can we uh, can you start uh, maybe answering questions that is live on the q and a Q&A section and then while doing that we can go on the the third speaker that is already waiting <laughs> right sure thank you thank, thank you. you thank yeah, you thank you for swipe Okay, uh, that's very interesting. Hopefully the participants can get answer for the, all the questions as well. Thank you so much. Uh, and then we now go into uh, the third uh, session on the corporate startup trends in the Netherlands, uh, featuring the world startup who's been actively enabling the both ecosystem, not only in Indonesia, but all over part of the world. Uh, please introduce Gerrit Jan van de Veen. Hello, Gerrit Jan. And uh, oh, before we started, uh, we also Wanna, we also get a lot of questions for startup world. First, uh, what can we learn from your experience about the trend and the best practice of the corporates and startups collaboration in the Netherlands? And then also, how did these collaborations change the way corporates and the startups operate with that respective uh, context? And also, we want to know that in practice, how did this collaboration bring significant benefits for both parties? Uh, corporates and the startups and could you share from your perspective how actually you as the ecosystem builders play important role in the drawing the connection because basically this is like a, a black box and you need to navigate this part right strategically and also on the top of that could you share your view on the international collaborations between these corporates and startups thank you so much and also after that after you answer that you can just uh, go directly to your presentation Thank you. All right. Well, well thank you. And, and it's a pleasure to be here and to, to, um, uh, to present our, um, or to, to try to give some answers here. Uh, actually, I would like to address them as much as possible in, uh, uh, in my presentation. Um, but, um, well, the, I think if you look at the trend that we see here in the Netherlands is that a lot of corporates are opening up very, um, uh, thorough and well-structured innovation programs where they work together with uh, startups uh, either by um, publishing the, their challenges and trying to work with winners or even going a step further and uh, building um, innovation houses innovation hubs or uh, other centers to work with startups on a daily basis incubators that are part of the corporate organizations are also uh, increasingly common so uh, i think that's a trend that we see here in the in the netherlands and it's really very beneficial of course for the startup ecosystem uh, given the time that we have in this um, in this webinar i would like to go to my uh, presentation and go uh, be as as quick as possible go uh, go through the slides um, So again, my name is uh, Gerrit van Veen. I'm um, uh, currently the CEO and I'm also the founder of uh, World Startup. Uh, it's a global entrepreneurship uh, platform and our mission is to accelerate purpose-driven entrepreneurship worldwide. Uh, our approach is that we support startups in every phase in their journey, invest in the best with time and capital in return for equity. We design, build and execute innovation programs with a focus on co-creation, by government, NGOs, business, and science. And we embrace experiments. We love bottom-up uh, programs. And in our philosophy, it's always revenue before investment. So we try to focus as much 
as possible with the startups that we support on customer development, uh, rather than uh, uh, immediately going for uh, raising uh, um, uh, funding rounds or funding or capital. We are a certified B Corporation and we are part of the Impact City uh, Innovation Network uh, in the Netherlands, uh, as our headquarters is also in, uh, in the Netherlands. So founded in 2015, and right now we have uh, over 20 people, a lot of them very senior, seasoned entrepreneurs, and 60 startups in uh, portfolio. Um, here are some of our, uh, uh, some of our uh, portfolio champions, like you from Singapore, Bastier, that created a very smart locking system for tracking trace of uh, cargo, cargo bags and, and also locking them with, with one chest here. Uh, Clickchain from uh, India, a fintech company that helps small scale farmers and street vendors with uh, increased profits through digital accountability and transparency using blockchain. And also, one of our champions is uh, Yu Green from uh, Taiwan, uh, operating in uh, Asia with uh, smart farming instruments. And these are just a couple of the examples that we, uh, that we uh, work with and are also shareholder uh, in. Um, some of our recent work, so the work that we do, we always work together with, uh, like I said, with NGOs, with corporates, with uh, universities. And uh, we are currently uh, sourcing for uh, WWF. And uh, for this reason, actually interested in uh, to, to have a, a longer co conversation with uh, ForestWise. Um, we are uh, designing and executing a series of hackathons together with the World Bank on uh, COVID for their COVID-19 data observatory that they are developing in Vietnam and also planning to expand to Thailand, Indonesia and India. And we're doing this actually with our uh, partner in Indonesia, Founders Talent. Um, and we've helped a dozen of partners in the Netherlands during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is actually still going on, of course. But with co-creation projects, together with startups, but also in collaboration with uh, Dutch universities. And the, that, the name of that platform is uh, Resilient Society. So this gives a little bit of an example of the stuff that we're, we're doing. And one of the things that is coming up, and I would really like to invite people for that as well, is a global online conference, um, uh, actually organized by Rotterdam in uh, September, where we're going to launch uh, one of our new platforms, which is Co-Create Future Cities. So if you talk about um, the, the working together, so corporates and startups working together, uh, one of the things that we really enjoyed is working together, uh, working for startup and residents. So we've been the startup partner for a, a number of ministries in the Netherlands and also uh, regional government and local government. And um, while working on these projects where startups are invited to come up with uh, solutions for societal uh, challenges that are uh, addressed and explained by uh, governments. And then they start, well, usually they start like a two months or a three months or even a longer program to work together with these governments on uh, solutions. And during that work, we created this uh, circle of startup and residents, which is about, okay, what are all the aspects that you have to do? What are all the things that you have to do to make sure that it is indeed a high quality program, ranging from creating a good scope and a real thorough selection of the societal challenges that you work on, all the way up to setting clear milestones uh, and celebrate also the achievements and, and mark new faces that you uh, start with your um, uh, mark new faces in the collaboration between the startup and in this case the government and I think actually this circle of startup and residents is also applicable to uh, to the relationships and the programs that you can run as a start as a corporate with uh, startups and it's one of the advices that we give to a lot of people in our network is if you want to do something together with uh, startups um, make turn it into programs turn it into a long-term strategy and yeah. try to build something that is uh, lasting for at least three years uh, do it multiple times uh, learn from each uh, round of uh, uh, of uh, projects or programs and uh, try to 
become better and better at all the aspects that are relevant in such a program. I might, uh, I might uh, cut you a bit. So we, this is really interesting, but we are more than, uh, we are already reached 4 p.m. now. Uh, are we okay with, for, with going through again? Especially we haven't even go to the question and answer yet. Uh, the embassy will be, be okay with this. Yes, please. I'm perfectly fine with whatever you want. I just want to, no, let want me just quickly to say. Up, yeah. We want to follow up this going through. So there's no saying no from the embassy. So we might as well just go through again. No, go on, go on. Yeah, all right. Okay. Thank yeah, you. sorry. Yeah, I'm no, it's all right. um, Here you are. So I think I just wanted to uh bring forward one of the one of these things like i think startups are a great partner to learn fast so one of the things that you can do with startups if you are a corporate and you want to embrace that that uh, startup ecosystem in your uh, operations is about trying to learn as fast as possible um, and i will get back to that in a, in a second um, this is actually one of the greatest resources and um, uh, repositories, repositories that we use when we uh, uh, work with this topic of corporates and startups. It's uh, uh, from Nesta, which is a UK-led uh, organization, of a, an organization from UK. And uh, well, you should really check this out because they have a lot of uh, interesting uh, lessons. Uh, I just want to quickly touch upon four of the lessons that we've uh, that, and that are also relevant right now during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so one of them is, is transparency. So a lot of startups that are really small and are next to a corporate don't have an idea what is going on in, in these organizations. And so if you want to, as a corporate, work together with startups, think about how big you are and think about the transparency that you have to create about uh, what your goals are and how you are structured and how you make decisions. Um, and I've seen, um, well, I've witnessed conversations between startups and corporates where they really think they are on the same page. But for instance, when somebody used the word, let's do this very fast, the corporate actually meant I can do this within well, perhaps nine months because of all the decisions that I have to organize. And the startup thought that it would be three days. <laughs> so think about that, um, well, lack of transparency because you are such a big organization. The other one is exploration. Is dare to take risks, dare to go out and, and explore new possibilities. And especially now in the COVID-19 crisis and in the pandemic, we have witnessed that a lot of corporates are, well, more risk averse than before. So I think it's good to be aware of that. So if you don't want to explore, if you don't want to take risks, don't try to work together with a startup because you probably end up with a lot of um, um, that misunderstanding. The, the third thing is time. So what I, try to, to, uh, to, to tell her is that if you're having this conversation with a startup, they're usually looking for resources. So if they sit somewhere, they feel the heat. <laughs> they feel the heat of, of cash flow. They feel the heat of uh, the investor that is pushing them for certain milestones. While you are in a comfortable chair and uh, you have a different perspective on the time. So be aware of that and ask for people uh, what, uh, ask for startups and for the, ask the founders what their uh, critical milestones are and what, when they, for instance, um, uh, need to, um, um, uh, need to uh, reach a certain milestone. Um, and the fourth thing is, is cash flow. And sometimes uh, corporates forget about that. Uh, but cash flow is one of the most important things for a startup. So for instance, paying an invoice only after 90 days, because that's your standard routine, that's really a great way to, uh, to, uh, well, to make a, a startup become very nervous. And then in that case, he can't, well, and it's a simple example, of course, but then he can't uh, focus on the right things. 
So these are just four of the things that I wanted to explain. And of course, uh, cash flow is even more important now during the crisis. Um, again, um, always welcome to, uh, of always eager to talk to interesting startups, uh, as long as they are purpose driven and want to really create added value for society and nature. And you can simply reach out to me with uh, any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gerrit Jan. And then uh, that concludes three speakers for today. We're going to go to the Q&A session, but before that, we would like to summarize. So uh, with, the, with all this changing, with all this interesting collaboration, we realized that Forest Wise and Allo Doctor has presented re really, really uh, specific solution for specific problem. So maybe what, what we could get this is like for, for all the startups to have, uh, to have the adaptability for what actually the solution needed based on the market as well as, as, well as the, the sharpness of the solution as well, as well and also added by the world startup that, to the fact that uh, the, the, the how to say it like uh, the the way the way startups think and the way corporate things are very different so from the startups from the startups if we, they want to work with the collaborated with the corporates they need to understand corporate shoes and vice versa the other way around so with with this uh, with this type of collaboration the embassy is actually trying to reach both sides and also because the dutch embassy has the all the linkage and the connections specific for this uh, uh, connection between dutch and indonesia and the focus sectors that uh, gov dutch government is endorsed so we uh, that would be very interesting uh, enablers to be the part of this journey of the startup especially for the dutch startup or indonesian startups want to want to get to know into the Dutch startups and related to them as well. And uh, for the Q&A uh, session, we would, we would focusing on the questions that is already uh, uh, submitted by the attendees before the webinar. Uh, because for the Q&A session now, we can see on the Q&A, the panelists can answer if you think you can answer each question and by uh, answering privately. But for the main Q and uh, the main questions that basically uh, for the startups, what what is actually the main challenge to link co uh, corporates and the startups within this new normal period? Like uh, we would like to hear from the other doctor and also from Forcewise and also from the enablers perspective. Uh, get it, yeah. And the uh, world startup has been answering that uh, subtly that that. Uh, we need to be balanced uh, to see how how actually this this collaboration needs to be done uh, especially like for instance the time uh, three days and 90 uh, three days and nine months is totally two different things right it's really really far apart so um, we would like to go first to uh, maybe force wise and then after that followed by uh, Bu Augustine and then maybe concluded with the world startup to answer this, like, what is the main challenge for this to link uh, corporates and startups? And also how to accelerate the, the innovation during this pandemic and its sustainability. Uh, please, uh, please, Gary, uh, maybe Dick Jan can start. Thank you, Saskia. Yeah, um, yeah the main challenge uh, for us is always uh, that uh, the corporates have a lot of standards uh, for certifications. And each corporate has a different standard. So for one, we have to have the organic uh, certification. For the other one, we have uh, to have fair for life. And, and uh, another corporation, again, another one. So for us, of course, it's uh, always a big investment every time to make sure uh, yeah, in time and money uh, to, to get this certification. Uh, where, whereas actually also the certifications overlap a lot. So uh, yeah, we, we always ask the, the, the corporate clients if they are able to support us then uh, to get those those uh, certifications okay. um yeah that is that is for us the um, the main challenge and and now uh of course with the corona uh, virus uh, we have to have uh, we have to had to change our strategy a bit to um uh, a lot of the corporates are not moving they're, they're not making new products so a lot of our projects uh, have been stopped that um, they were developing new products with our ingredients uh, but that is now paused uh, for a few months 
Uh, so now we are looking at how we can go directly to the market, to the consumer, uh, so we can uh, yeah, sort of like bypass that. Right, so your surviving strategy is basically just to make a new business uh, channel, is it? Is that it? Yeah, uh, direct to consumer, we, we were already working on that, but we're speeding that up now. Uh, yeah, because we, have, we have, don't have the opportunity to wait uh, for these other uh, companies to, to come through. Okay. Uh, what about Bu Agustin? Uh, because as we know that health in this COVID pandemic is maybe booming, like what you stated in the presentation, how you actually navigate the challenge and what actually what challenge actually arise? Because we see that uh, alongside your opportunities, there's a lot of new competitors in the market, right? And maybe this is time for either uh, rice or or just being uh, screwed with the other competitors. Can you answer to that? Thank you. Uh, we cannot hear you, Bu Agustin. You need to unmute it. Yes. Uh, no. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting uh, the way uh, Gareth uh, thought about different timing. We call it timing difference because actually it's knocking my memory at first time doing the partnership. Yeah. It's really a big gap when we call a time process that in startup normally a month is already a year. Well, in corporate level, <laughs> I mean, a month, I mean, uh, apa? a year is a year. So meaning that for them is uh, taking bureaucratic uh, decision is long process while hours need to be fast. That's the challenge. I think in regards for the cooperation between corporate, especially Dutch corporate Indonesia, I think I, I may call it not a uh, challenge, but it's more to opportunist, uh, oppor uh, opportunity. Why? Because actually, right now, some of the big company, uh, be it Dutch or non-Dutch company, are interesting to uh, embrace the emerging market. They call it emerging market. Actually, it's the digital market. They understand the way people communicate, the way people campaign, and then penetrate their target segment. Segment is very different from the old days with this traditional marketing uh, mix strategy. So I think there is a big opportunity in digital market, I would say. Thank you, Ibu. Uh, Gerrit Yan, can you add addition to that? Uh, because uh, basically the time seems like very important uh, differences, uh, a different understanding. But yeah. come to this COVID-19, like what does the time mean? Like what kind of collaboration, as Dirk Yan stated, that some companies actually stopping? So how, how do we deal with this? Uh, as the enabler. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, there, there, there are two things here. I, I think really both corporates and uh, startups should always start with the problem. Um, so, so focus on the problem and not on the solution. So we see a lot of startups that are in love with their solution. Uh, but I think the, what is more important, that's what I also liked really a lot, a lot about both the presentations of the, the, the entrepreneurs uh, in this uh, panel, is that you have to be in love with the problem and really want to solve that. And I think if you look at COVID-19, perhaps the, the, the problem is changing because of that, but we are certain that there are a lot of problems still. <laughs> so try to find each other on this focus on the problem uh, instead of to try to, to, to stay in your trenches and, and to keep pushing your, uh, your, the solution that you already have. Thank you so much. Uh, so for the next question, uh, how do we accelerate the corporates and startups sustainability and this innovation other than, for instance, that this focusing on the problem, like how, how uh, does this the COVID-19 situation change the way corporates evaluate a prospect of a startup? Like, uh, for instance, how they actually change this? Do they halt this or do they want to wait until the COVID-19 done or do they actually open to, for the startups to, to solve new problems that emerge? You, you can ask. Well, if I, yeah, if I quickly can address it. So I'm really, uh, sadly, a lot of big organizations always try to, in, these, in a situation of crisis, they make simple decisions uh, and they make very big decisions. So, which basically means they close doors for external innovation. And I think that's really something that is, I was, I was, I, I was uh, expecting it, 
but in the end still uh, surprised that it is done so uh, no, um, uh, no, almost in a dramatic way. And I really hope that uh, a lot of corporates, and of course it's not all of them are doing it, but I really hope they will pick up this, this uh, conversation and the working together and the collaboration with startups uh, as soon as possible. And that in the next crisis that we're gonna have, that they, uh, that by then working together with startups is embraced at the core of their organization and thus not something that is just simply switched off as soon as you um, bump into uh, 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 a recession like we are doing right now. Okay, thank you so much. Well, my, the, the, last, uh, the last question maybe before we conclude, we wanna ask uh, both the entrepreneurs uh, about uh, uh, how, uh, how do you actually change your strategy? Like not, not how in detail, but like, uh, again, if we wanna focus on the problem, like how would, uh, how would actually, how adaptable that a startup needs to, needs to change during this pandemic? Like, uh, especially for forest wise, because we realized that, uh, uh, Allo Doctor is still in the health sector, that and, and then and then Force Wise is totally like on outside of that part. Maybe the org, especially where the organic uh, boom is still emerging in Indonesia, where where the market maybe is still emerging. It's not like uh, you are doing the organic market in Australia, for instance. Like maybe would you like to elaborate on that, just to share for all these questions? We also see that you answer a lot of questions. Thank you so much in the Q and A. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, yeah, so so um, what we what we are trying to do the, for for the corporates that uh, that have paused uh, the the program, we, we have uh, um, we we have also uh, paused that, and we are just uh, looking with them like okay, but the other products that you are developing um, uh, can also be uh, can, can we see if we can supply uh, ingredients for that? For example, a lot of companies are um, making hand gels, uh, hand sanitizers. Uh, because of the, the, the whole situation. Um, and uh, we also introduced the soap recently and we saw that the, yeah, the sales of that went really well. Uh, the, the soap is more moisturizing than, than other soaps. So that way we could uh, give a small uh, answer to the, um, uh, yeah, to, to the to this situation, but the, um, uh, the production is, uh, was, was still limited. So now we are uh, increasing uh, that. Um, yeah, so it's it's um, it's been quite a challenge, and but what we do see that uh, uh, of course um, it's uh, yeah the the whole situation is also uh, um, uh, caused by deforestation uh, in a way. Uh, the, how yeah, the extracting the the animals from the forest is easier if the if the forest is not there anymore. So uh, these kind of situations will happen more if uh, if we uh, don't stop the destruction of the forest. And we see that uh, there's a lot more understanding of that uh, right now. So there's also uh, a lot more interested uh, uh, in, in the work uh, we are doing, unfortunately. Thank you so much for the answer. Uh, Augustine, can you add up to that? And then we will conclude this uh, interesting webinar. Because, yeah, please, Augustine. You need to unmute it again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I understand from Forest Wise because it's a product uh, product company, right? I think the same with others product company in Indonesia. Some are uh, posing a hot uh, situation because of the pandemic. But in our doctor, we are a digital uh, platform company as well as like a marketplace company. So this is like a bit uh, high uh, position for us, fortunately. like. Uh, people are converting from physical consultation with the doctor in hospital because they are afraid of uh, COVID-19 and then they going to teleconsultation for instance. Or let's say they, they want to do, uh, let's say to browse information about the product and things, they are going to the online platform rather than the apa, the face-to-face -face, uh, shopping. With 
actually this is a potential for us why we are embarking into e-commerce even though we, we're not doing like what others think doing like uh, e-commerce between b2c but we are planning to go with b2b because we never want we never know uh, how long the pandemic will last so that's why uh, i think it is adaptable to its company wise basis so something can be something can be down something can be an opportunity uh, to elaborate or to embark with thank you thank you so much for augustine what an interesting webinar today now i would like to conclude uh, but uh, the recording of this webinar will be available via netherlands embassy uh, uh, social media and we will be shared with you through your email all the attendees and also we answered uh, 26 questions and there is still six open if the uh, there's if there's still time now maybe two minutes while i'm talking the the panelists can answer that questions and uh, for for the conclusion we realized that that this pandemic uh, make a new normal is a bit uh, very challenging and as an entrepreneur like we would need to we need to be adapt to, adaptive to the problem especially where the capital providing uh, current situation is trying to take more time to see to to conduct their investment for instance and also for the corporates wants to uh, wants to collaborate with startups in the terms of accelerating their innovation. There are four things that are important. The first is transparency and how far do you want to explore it and also the understanding the meaning of time and also understanding the meaning of cash flow for both sides. Basically, this collaboration needs uh, will happen if, let's say, both sides actually open to be on the other shoes. And also, there's one more thing that the fact that this new normal, there's a lot of problems and there's a lot of solutions has a different context by nature with the new normal. So as an entrepreneur, we need to be in love with the problem as the problem is changing by day. So that's really interesting. We, will, uh, we would like to thank you for all the panelists to, that, that should be here. And also we will, Angin would like to thank you for Dutch Embassy uh, of, in Jakarta that uh, provide us this, uh, this experience. And also we would like to thank for the, all the attendees and for all the questions that uh, that's uh, during live and before. We received more than uh, 58 questions beforehand. And now we received uh, a lot of uh, 33 questions. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everybody. Uh, so we leave the, we're gonna leave the meeting. And now uh, we can say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Yeah, have a nice Bye. day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.